happens. I was trying a vivid setting on my camera. I will not try it again. I thought with the project of going back to Rage Against the Machine's first album, which I do put on quite a bit, but going back to it specifically to assess it, I might find that it's full of and defined by the tropes that define Rage Against the Machine's sound. And maybe that would make me realise that it's more of a narrow product, really, but I went back and I listened to it from that lens. And yeah, all that stuff's there because it's good stuff. But as well as riffs that dance up the octave and those freaky guitar solos and rapping political vocals, this still feels fresh and innovative and every track just hits hard full force. I'm probably going to say this about later albums, but it's got a first half that's just a hyper combo, and then a second that's a bit more dark and gloomy and freeform, but they've earned that with the first half and it really carries you through and it's worth it itself. A, a full album of that first half might have been a bit shallow. So still an essential product 31 years on. I think the reference to a cliche sound for Rage Against the Machine, I mean it's fun as a cartoon, but if you want to find it in their careers, then find it in the bands they went from after. The follow down's a bit of a dodgy consideration. Call me a noob, but I always forget that this one comes second. It sounds like something that comes third to me. And that's because of something and how it's lost in its own mark. It's still the sound and the fury of rage. But, and I know this is an odd criticism for this band, but it seems to lack fun. Fun really isn't what they're here for, they're here to make an impact, and the statements are there to make an impact, but sometimes making an impact is helped along by fun. And there's just the fewest of their powerful yellow long tracks on this one. Still good music, not exactly good songs. Then there's the one that does feel like the second album because of how it does what was on the first album, but with more focus and like they've been reassured by finding an audience. So there's a radio ready first half and a people who buy the album ready second half. This is a tighter rage. They get through more songs than were on the debut in a lot less time. And it's such a similar product, just honed a bit, that it's difficult to rank which one's going on top. I think I'm happy with this decision because I just really love this debut. Now, when I came up to making this video, I didn't yet have this one by ABBA. Is it by ABBA? And thought, like, I can spare two quid to get the crappy covers album that they petered out with at the end of their career, and then inevitably put it on the bottom of the stack, because who wants a last album covers album? I thought that would make quite an easy four CD video to get through, but then I put this on and it's really fucking good. There's no coasting, there's no exactly surprises for the kinds of songs they're into, and yet it's still a diverse set, and they bring a lot new to each of the songs. They make them rage. Kind of obviously, but they make them rage. Ridiculously good for the consideration of a covers album, and I considered ranking it second and honestly maybe even first. I've come down to it going here, and I do wonder how much of that is my relative disrespect for covers. You know, they are not new songs. You can't assess them from a songwriter perspective although they did bring a lot new to them. I think I've justified it to myself in how the message here is secondhand, some kind of message less, and that's technically less essential music. But the fact that I needed to think it through that way to hold this off the top spot should say something. It's their most diverse album, it's a good palate cleanser after the inherent sameness of any of the rest of them. Whatever, that's a very tight three there, and then just another album that's still alright. It's rock with a particularly primal power that I think has influenced a lot of music since, good and bad. It's a logical continuation of the 4x4 riffing of, like, ACDC. It's the only continuation that would be worth hearing. It actually brings content to that. I know they reunite and play songs, and I don't know if they'll record anymore, but this is a concise career, and most of it is really good. Long may they rage, but maybe just as a nostalgia rat could be fine. <laughs>